and I press. You gotta press the right buttons, right? Ready? Live? Good morning, Kahal Kadosh. Good morning, Kahal Kadosh. Welcome, everybody. The Lighthouse live video feed Torah project, La'ilu Nishmat Devorah Feige Bat Shemuel, Ora Devorah Bat Shemuel, and Refua Shelema of Menachem Mendel Ben Sarabasha, Hana Bat Shani, and Asher Ben Malka, among the Holim of Am Israel. Amen. Additionally, the iTorah.com, uh, dedicated for the prompt Shiduchim for Nehama Dina Bat Hanabatia, Eliyahu Haim Ben Esther, Sarasim Habat Sofi, Rahel Penina, Bat uh, Jenny. There was an Elui Nishmat, additional Elui Nishmat. Okay, he'll give it to me soon. Anyways, now, today, Ve'ezat Hashem, time allowing, we'll go to the Hawk. But many of you remember that on Sunday, we started to discuss the concept of Birkat Amazon. So I mentioned, and I like to put this for the visual of the Kahal, there is a new sefer that is called Birkat Amazon with Kavana. It has stories, explanation, messages. This is the Hebrew version, English version, Hebrew version, and now it's coming the Spanish version that Be'ezat Hashem will be launched in Mexico City I believe in two weeks from now, and uh, Be'ezat Hashem uh, will try to get some copies uh, to the Kahal. But for those interested in purchasing these Sefarim, I believe Tehillat Ishak in Brooklyn sells them. Uh, I believe maybe Mekor as well, but I do know Tehillat Ishak does sell them, and it comes in different colors to match the furniture of your home. So believe me, anyone who uses this book, to recite the Birkat Amazon, guaranteed return on their investment. And you know me that I don't say this lightly. Guaranteed return on your investment of the Birkat Amazon. You know why? Because it's going to definitely enhance the way we fulfill this mitzvah from the Torah. So with your permission... I'm not going to go into the actual text of the Birkat Amazon, which, interesting enough, for everybody's peace of mind, the English version, it has the Sephardic text and the Ashkenazic text. So this way, whatever tradition you follow, you don't change, you continue reading your Nusach the way you're accustomed to, but definitely the Nusach that we read, it's really irrelevant, but all the insight and the beautiful commentaries that the Birkat Amazon has is what we are trying to discuss uh, today. So I'd like to start a couple of benefits from the Birkat Amazon. Since I don't know this book by heart, I like to basically read from inside the book. Let me get for me more comfortable this version. So it says as follows. Okay, the Hebrew version is much longer than the English, so let's resort to the English version. Before I do that, let me say a beracha. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam shehakol nihiyya bitbaro. This comes from the Midrash Alpha Beta. We know we discussed this topic maybe a week ago the importance of having a clean body. And the clean body that we refer to wasn't necessarily the external being of the body. A person changes garments, a person takes a shower, etc. That is definitely important and essential. But we also spoke about the cleanliness of the human body internally cleaning the, the digestive system, etc. But we also threw in that one beracha, one blessing that definitely brings many dividends into the human body is reciting the beracha of Asher Yatsar. We know this beracha. Asher Yatsar et ha'adam be'chokmah 
ubara bo nekavim nekavim halulim halulim in this blessing we are saying thank you to akadosh baruchu and blessing hashem for the proper function of a uh, functioning of the human body and regretfully we know from professional and personal experience that if god forbid god forbid something abnormal happens in the body of the person if something that is supposed to be completely open becomes blocked or something that is supposed to be completely connected suddenly becomes ruptured god forbid what do we say in the birkat in the asheria tsar even one hour god forbid can lo aleno belo alechem you know the outcome so the midrash alphabet says that the zechut of a person reciting birkat amazon and saying berachot for eating the pasuk says vasiroti mahala mikirbecha vasiroti mahala mikirbecha means that hashem will send the cure through food that what the person eats will only have a positive benefit on the body let's be honest here i wish i have the package in front of me somebody asked me to check on a popcorn popcorn a week ago was parv a week later is dairy good question both packages both upcs are the same everything is the same one difference but obviously deshgaha will inform me later on today hopefully i already started the research yesterday if it's dairy or if it's a different flavor therefore we avoid the dairy flavor and we stick to the par version only especially since this is given to the children on shabbat etc but if you will read the package it has 10 different symbols non gmo vegan a gcf halal approved parv ou american based corn not made in china all us products package in the united states yani 10 madregot that buying from this brand it gives you today at least in this part of the world most food that we buy most food contains something known as nutrition facts correct they give you carbohydrates fat saturated fat sugars you know all kinds of things and we need to learn how to read the label sometimes they magnify the calories and they downgrade the carbs you follow me for those who follow keto diet they know the halakhot of the keto diet according to keto eating or keto lifestyle you know so today you go to whole foods you have a whole section vegan section low carb section keto friendly section yani you get dizzy what to pick the other day i went and guess what i bought nothing i bashut i walked in i bought what i needed to buy which i know i knew and he said you know what maybe a snack i'm behaving good guess what i went to 10 different boxes i started to look at the numbers started to look at the components and guess what i walked out without buying anything wine somebody asked me this yesterday why wines don't have nutrition facts the answer is as follows every year the wine the vintage of the wine the year of the wine has a lot of components that can change the composition of the numbers of the wine so wine is something that doesn't have but many other things do have guess what you know what this pasuk says vasiroti I will remove the illness from your body the midrash alphabet says that when a person eats 
and obviously kosher. And berachot before and after the kedusha of the beracha penetrates into the food and the food becomes a source of healing in the body of the person. This is one. Next, the saying of the Birkat Hamazon, it's equal to all of the misvot of the Torah. We knew this concerning the misvah of Sisit. When it comes to the misvah of Sisit, we say in the Shema, Uritem oto, uzchartem et kol misvot Hashem, ba'asitem otam. The Gemara explains that when a person puts on the talet or puts on the sisit, it's like the person is fulfilling all of the misvot of the Torah. That doesn't mean that put on sisit and don't do nothing else, has the shalom. But I'm saying that the magnitude of this misvah is more than it meets the eye. So let's read quickly the Yalkut Shimoni. And it says as follows. And it says that when you eat, Beachalta, Besabata, Uberachta, Eta Shem Okecha, if you look in the Perasha, where this is coming from Perasha Ta'ekev, uh, I don't have a Humash Devarim. Can someone bring me a Hamisha Humshet Torah from outside quickly? So let's do it professionally so everybody can see the Pasuk, which it's here. And the Benishai explains this Pasuk concerning the Gemara in Menachot. And it says that part of Irat Shamaim, thank you so much, young man. Hazaku Baruch, thank you. Let's go quickly. Perashat Aikev. Let's find the source of this Mizvah. Chapter 8, I believe. Yes, chapter 8. Verse, Pasuk, okay. Alar es atova, right here. Beachalta besabata u berachta et Hashem elokecha, alar es atova. So comes the first Pasuk in this chapter that says, Kol hamizva asher anochi mesavecha hayom tishmerun laasod. The commandment that I'm commanding you today, you fulfill. But how does this pasuk begin? Kol hamizva. Kol in Hebrew means all. And the mizva is one. So make up your mind. The pasuk should have said kol hamizvot. All of the mizvot. But the pasuk did not say kol hamizvot. The pasuk says kol hamizva. Now I'm scanning through the pesukim. I don't have mitzvot in the pasuk. No, what, yeah, it tells me, remember the miracles that I did when you left Egypt. Beautiful. Remember that I gave you the man. Remember that I protected you in your journey. Remember to remember God. But at the end, at the end, at the end, at the end, all of the benefits of the land of Israel comes the pasuk and it says, Uberachta. This is the mitzvah. It says the Ben Ishai in Gemara Menachot and Ben Yoyada that this Pasuk that grants the person all of the blessings that the Torah writes. Remember that I carry you in the desert. Remember that I provided you the man. Remember that I never abandoned you. Remember you did not have to change your garments. Remember that your feet did not swell. Remember that I'm protecting you and I'm carrying you to the land of Eres Israel. I'm bringing you to the land of the milk and honey and all the blessings that we have. On what foundation the Benishai explains? On the Mizvah of Birkat Hamazon. Fascinating Hidush. Check it out in Perashat Ekev, which it says, we all know that in the time of David and Melech, Shalom, there was a plague that affected Bnei Israel tremendously. A hundred young people, God forbid, will leave the world unexpectedly. Finally, David Amelech was informed that there was a tikkun for this tragedy, the concept of reciting a hundred berachot a day. And it's a gemara. Hayav adam levarech me'a berachot v'chol yom. 
What is the purpose of a person reciting Berachot? Short answer, he explains in the Ben Yoyada, reciting Berachot helps the Irat Shamaim of the person. At the end of the day, let's be honest here. What is our mission in this world? Not as a parent, not as a husband, not as a son, not as a brother, but as a Jew. What is my mission in this world? To sanctify Hashem in the world. To bring godliness into the world. To bring godliness into my life. One thing is godliness into the world. When we act properly, when we behave properly, when we treat people properly, when we act, mamash, we sanctify Hashem's name. But how do I, me, myself, and I, how do I invest in my irat shamayim? So there are a lot of answers. One of them is learning Torah. But besides learning Torah, is doing mizvot. But besides doing mizvot, the Benish Hai explains, reciting berachot. Because that creates a strong bonding of emunah between the person and bore olam. And that's why the Pasuk says, Be'ata Israel, ma Hashem elokecha sho'el me'imach. Se Gemara is a Pasuk in the Perasha that says, what is God asking from us? The Gemara says, al tikre ma ela me'a. A very famous Gemara. Don't say what is God asking from us, but Hashem is asking us to recite a hundred blessings a day, because, which is not difficult. It may sound difficult just thinking of the number, but I'll give you right away the numbers. It's much easier than we think. A person prays Amen three times a day. Shaharit Minha Arvit. Three Amidot, that's already 57 blessings. 19 Berachot, each Amida. So look at that. A hundred. I'm already to care of 57. Beautiful. We all say Birkot Shahar, the morning blessings. How many morning blessings are there? Depends on the Sidu we use. But let's give you an easy number 15. I'm already in 72 blessings. Just by praying and saying, just praying the Amidah. What about Berachot before Shema? What about before, after Shema? What about Berachot of Shaharit? What about Berachot of Arvit? What about Berachot of Talet? What about Berachot of Tefillin? Okay? Food. I, 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 and I'm fasting. I'm still fasting. I'm talking only about basic misvot that we do. What about going to the bathroom? You are human, right? You may be a malach. No, I'm the guy behind you, not you. Relax. Okay. <laughs> Okay, okay, you may be a malach, but at the end of the day, we are humans. If we are humans, we go to the bathroom. Don't tell me how many times you go. But usually, usually, people go to the bathroom, minimum, I should say, two, three times a day. Better three than two. Correct? And some people may have situations that may have to go more. So therefore, we say, asheri atzar. How many times? Now, let's say, let's be honest. Ta'anit is not every day. So you have a coffee, you have a snack, you have a tea, you have water, you have lunch, breakfast, dinner. Some people skip dinner, some people skip lunch, doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, we all know that to function properly and to be calm and to be collective, you must eat. You cannot function without eating and some people may say rabbi if i eat i don't function you may be the exception the gemara in baba messiah interesting enough quotes the pasuk that i mentioned before vahasiroti mahala mikirvecha the word mahala i believe numerical value it's 83 Let's do the numbers, Mahala, maybe 83. Do the numbers if you want. And it says the Gemara that a person that has breakfast removed, removes 
83 potential conditions that affect the digestive system and the human body. Don't ask me which ones are they, but for us, we have a Muna. The Gemara tells me that, I accept. But I tell you what else the Gemara says. Mori de takina umosif eta ahava. The Gemara says, when a person eats and a person has breakfast, and the Gemara's breakfast, just for the record, was water and bread. This is called in the Talmudic language, Pat Shaharit. This at least was, in the olden days, what people ate. And let's be honest here. Maybe they may have not lived a sophisticated way of life 2,000 years ago, but the food was more natural and more real than the synthetic food that we eat today. This is the reality of today's society. And that's why many people eat, don't eat GMO. Rachetevo, genetically modified organism. They eat more natural, organic, etc. And again, I'm not proposing you should, you should not. I'm only sharing with the Kahal things that are happening today and people sometimes don't understand. I eat healthy. No, you don't eat healthy. Because a lot of the foods that we have, I went to the store. I said, I need a healthy candy for the children. They laughed at me. See, if it's candy, it's not healthy. No, give me sugar-free that they say doesn't exist. The coloring and the natural flavors. And again, I'm not promoting not to eat candy. Has shalom. But I'm telling you, I'm telling myself that the Talmud believed in those days and they proved it. But what is the ultimate benefit? Not the physical, but the emotional. Since when the Gemara needs to tell me Lowers jealousy, lowers anxiety, increases love. Since when the Talmud needs to tell me, increase love? The word love in this Gemara has a lot of meanings. Number one, it says that the, let me put the proper perspective that the anxiety of an empty stomach that sometimes people experience affects the mind of the person. Not to an extreme, but it becomes the person cranky. It makes the person without tolerance, without patience. And we don't know why we're acting this way. You suddenly become frustrated very rapidly and very easy. The Gemara says, your stomach is empty. Eat. You're going to lower the decibels of anxiety. Your stomach is not going to have a symphonic orchestra playing, you know, under the skin. And mosif eta ahava increases love. And it's not only talking about that you love your wife more and you don't think about someone else, God forbid, which is one of the side effects the Gemara says on this topic. But it's the concept of a person feeling calm, collective, and becoming more productive. Fascinating lesson from the Talmud. Not only that, the Zohar Kadosh tells us also about the concept of eating in front of Hashem. Let's read another Pasuk. There is a Pasuk, I believe, in Perashat Re'e. Let me get the source. 14.23, right here. This Pasuk begins, Aser te aser et kol tebuat zar'echa. The mitzvah of giving ma'aser. And we know the secrets. Aser v'shvil shetit asher, the Talmud says. In the merit of a person fulfilling the mitzvah of giving 10% of the net profits, Hashem will bless the person. Now, there is another code in this pasuk. 
when the Pasuk says, Aser te Aser, is telling us that giving 10% is good, but giving 20% is much better. Beautiful. But that's not the message that I'm getting. I'm only told you this because it's next to me. So, but the continuation says, Be'achalta lifne Hashem elokecha. You will eat in front of Hashem. I ask you a question. If I tell you, based on this pasuk, you will eat in front of the Almighty, ba'makom asher ibhar leshachen shemo sham, in the place where he selected to dwell there. Where do you think that the pasuk is talking about? If it's me translating this pasuk, Bet HaMikdash, the holy temple, where Hashem's holy abode will be. This is the Peshat, and this is the literal meaning of the Pasuk. But you know what the Zohar Kadosh is? That the Torah is telling us, Be'achalta lifne Hashem, every time, and this is important, every time that a Jew eats, God is next to us. Wait, now I'm getting inspiration. Let's read the Pasuk again. You will eat in front of the Almighty in the place that He chose to dwell. Guess what? God, Hashem, is not limited to the Beta Mikdash. God comes to our home. For those that were here Friday night, I quoted the version of the Talmud that discusses the importance of harmony at home, that living in shalom, in a marriage, brings God to our home. So based on this pasuk, Hashem doesn't have one address. G send a letter to God, send it to the Beit HaMikdash. No, every one of our homes has the potential of being a small sanctuary. Maybe it doesn't have the magnificence and the beauty of the Beit HaMikdash, but guess what? God does not need a fancy building to be in. Our simple homes, our limited size apartments, or homes, as long as that the spirit of the home, the environment of the home is clean and beautiful and peaceful, God says, I'm moving in. So based on this, now we are able to understand what the Zohar Kadosh is. That when I'm eating, Hashem is with me. And remember Sunday, I quoted the Pasuk from Yehezkel HaNavi that says, By the Berilai, Zea Shulchan Asher Lifne Hashem. This is the table of the Almighty. Usually, when we say the word table, what are we referring to? The table in the Bet HaMikdash that contained the 12 breads, that were replaced every Friday, and in a way of miracle, they remain warm throughout the entire week, and every Friday afternoon, they will bring the new loaves, and they will insert the new loaves, they will remove the weak old loaves, they all were warm, even the weak old ones, and they will split it among the Kohanim of the week. This was some of the miracles of the Beit HaMikdash. That contained 12 breads, 12 loaves, Call them lechem apanim. They look exactly the same from the top and from the bottom, like a pita bread. That is exactly the same. If you take a roll from the table, what do you see? The bottom is flat and the top is round. In the Beta Mikdash, they were rectangular. From both sides, they look exactly the same. By the way, this is the reason why, and please look at me for a moment. Uh, when many people, when they take the halot on Shabbat, what they do? They do this. They put the bottom of one chali with the bottom of the other chali. Why? Or like this. There are two opinions. You do them like this, or you can do them sideways. Irrelevant of which tradition you follow, but why do we do this? So this way, they will look from both sides the same, equal. That's the reason why we put them together. Many people, to avoid this, they use pita bread. 
that is flat from both sides. Halachically, that is not a problem. You want to use Halley roll, you want to use pita bread. One thing I will tell you that is appropriate, and this is not the topic, but I'm throwing it in as a freebie today, that is appropriate that the breads that we use for Shabbat, both of them should be the same. Obviously, in a situation of an unexpected situation, you thought you had four Hali rolls, you only have three Hali rolls and one big Hali. Nish geferlach, as they say. Not a big deal. It's not a sin. But why do I say try to have both breads equal? Because this is how it was in the Beta Mikdash. Bo all the breads were exactly the same. Now, and that's the reason why we, we suggest, we can only suggest, and especially in our home, that when we talk about baking Hali at home, so we bake, my wife, I just pay the light bill. That's all I do, okay? <laughs> and carry the machine if it's too heavy. I don't do nothing. My wife says, I need my space. You heard this at home? Oh, so I'm not the only one. Everybody's on the same boat, I see. Okay, beautiful. Okay, Baruch Hashem, so it means that we are normal. Okay? But we know very well, and I'm going to say this to the holy ladies of, that are watching and listening, that the moment of baking challah, it's a very holy moment. It's a very special moment. And I don't have to tell you that Baruch Hashem the holy women of the Jewish people bake challah on a regular basis. Sometimes they do challah baking events, like the Shabbat project, or they do it in Refuah Shelema, and thousands and thousands or hundreds of ladies gather, and they separate challah, beautiful, beautiful things. But I know that this exists because we have it at home, and I'm sure that all Jewish stores sells them. They sell a page is a single page or a booklet of kavanot during the moment of baking the chali. When you pour the flour, you have the following thought. When you put the water, when you put the, the milk, not the milk, mehila, remove that. When you put the salt, if you add some sugar, not too much because it's sweet, then it's a different beracha for sefaradim. But or the yeast and every component of the chala baking carries a spiritual message and a prayer. Not a prayer of Baruch Hashem, but a prayer. What does it mean water? What does it mean salt? What does it mean yeast? And guess what? When the challah is baked, preceded with this thought, which may sound complicated, but they are not. Believe me, now the challah is not just bread. It's a challah that was infused with an ingredient that is never enough. Spiritual energy. And that's why it is impor important and imperative. And I say this to the holy women. To be calm and happy when it comes to making halot. I like to add my two cents. When it comes to cooking, because the pleasantness and the happiness and the energy, it influences the food. So what the men should do? Stay away from the kitchen. Don't tell your wife what to do. Don't make your comments. Don't offer extra help that instead of helping, you're bothering. You can wash the dishes if you don't break them in purpose, and if she asks you, or she lets you. I'm sorry, but this is the reality of life. We understand that this matters, Haim Tovim, that this matters how simple they appear to be. Now you're telling me, Rabbi, are you telling me that when I'm sitting down to eat, God is next to me? Yes, sir. Yes, ladies. Yes, Haim Tovim. Yes, gentlemen. Also, when we are learning Torah, by the way, when 10 Yehudim sit down together to learn Torah, God says, save me a seat. I'm coming to be with you. 
That's what the Mishnah writes in, 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 in Avot, and that is what the Zohar Kadosh writes. Continues and it says, now that we understand that we eat and Hashem is with us, now we understand why there is the proper decorum and proper behavior how a person eats. Besides kosher food, that's bichlal, is not a need to discuss it again. But berachot, before, after, proper speech. Actually, when you eat, you should not speak. We know that very well. You eat in between bites. We talk. Why we don't talk? Sakana. That's a basic common concept. Training the children in saying the berachot. One area that definitely we can use as, an, as a boost for improvement, to recite Berachot loud. That's, it. That's an area that I think that we all can utilize an improvement. Some people are more careful than others in this matter. But there is a concept. You say a Beracha, your wife listens. She says a Beracha, you listen. Guess what? We gain an Amen. Let's put the Amen on the side. When we eat and we say the Beracha quietly and you have children around us, they don't know that you said it quietly. What they say, oh, he took it. They take it. So for a mechinuch perspective, from an educational angle, we need to understand something that I did say in the past. And, you know, the Talmud says, it's not enough, it's not the same learning something or reviewing something a hundred times, like a hundred and one times. A hundred and one is different than a hundred. Maybe to the outside world, it's not different, but from a Torah perspective, it is different. We cannot forget the fact that the children look up to the parents, and a picture is worth a thousand words. When a child sees that how we eat, how we talk, how we say the berachot, how we check the kashrut, and how we have the discipline of saying, you know what? The kashrut is not on the recommended list. So we look for a different restaurant. For example, or this product doesn't have supervision. No, but it's only peanut butter, or it's only popcorn. I understand, but it doesn't have a supervision. You know how many kashrut problems you can have in popcorn? That doesn't have ashgaha? The dairy, the butter, the fat that they use, the flavoring that they use. I'm only giving you just a simple example. I'm not an expert in every ingredient, but through the years and through your questions, I do research. And you come to learn how things are camouflaged with a different name. And once you start researching, you know, the FDA calls it non-dairy, the Shukhan Aruch calls it dairy. You understand the difference? And I think that this is a very beautiful, I mean, only in the beginning of the Birkat Amazon benefits. Another benefit, it says, longevity. That a person that is makpid on the topic of saying Birkat Amazon properly, Hashem grants the person a long life. And the question is as follows. What is the connection between longevity and Birkat Amazon? I think the answer, this comes from the Zohar Kadosh, page 169a, Perashat Teruma, and it says that when a person blesses HaKadosh Baruch Hu. What is the guaranteed return? The Pasuk says, Ba'avarecha mebarechecha. It says, whenever a person blesses, the Beracha bounces back. And we all agree that as long as Hashem keeps showering us with blessings, that is a great concept. Now, which blessing are we referring to? Let's open the Siddur and let the Siddur do the talking. 
Let's open the Amida. And I love this because we get to read things that we have been reading for years. I don't want to say hundreds of years because I don't see anybody here over a hundred. We are below Baruch Hashem. But let's read. Sim Shalom. Beautiful prayer. Sim Shalom Toba Ubracha. We mention about peace. You mention goodness, Toba. Beracha. And we talk about blessing. So right away the Zohar says, blessing is part of the Mizvah of Birkat Amazon. And what is the next blessing that comes from the word Beracha? Haim. Life. What the Zohar said in Perashat Eruma, a person who recites Birkat Amazon properly is granted life. Sidur. We say this for thousands of years. Sim Shalom Toba Ubracha. Right, I'm sorry. I was covering it. Beracha Haim. Bless Birkat Amazon, the person is blessed with life. A key ingredient, the Zohar in Perashat Vayakhel writes, the importance of reciting Birkat Amazon with joy and happiness. There is a pasuk in the Torah that says, Et hata'ai ani maskir hayom. I remember my sins. I sin, like some people do in the world. What I'm referring to, not eating bread for the laziness of not having to say Birkat Amazon. That's the way the Yeserara trained me. Don't eat bread. So you don't have to wash, you have to do Birkat Amazon. This is one of the taxes of the Yeserara. They said, no, eat mesonot. There is mesonot bread. For the record, we are not going to change the bread that we served here for breakfast. The bread remains mesonot. And there are reasons behind this why we do it. So this way people can eat and live. We rather people stay and learn. Maybe some people may not say Birkat Amazon. Maybe some people do takeout service which we don't really have a takeout service, but sometimes people do takeout, beracha y salud, as they say in Spanish. But it says here clearly that a person should not be sad when a person recites the Birkat Amazon, and the Birkat Amazon should be said with joy and happiness. Comes the Hida HaKadosh, and it says that when a person enjoys the food and the food it's tasty the berachot come out better makes sense imagine yourself you have to eat something because you don't feel well you don't really like that food but they tell you no have ginger tea or have this type of soup and you don't want it the Hida says that when a person enjoys the food in a tasty fashion, the person becomes inspired to say beracha with happiness and say the beracha with joy. In English they say, count your blessings. Count the blessings that we have food to eat, that we are able to eat food, that our taste buds can taste the difference in the food. There are people that cannot afford food. There are people that, God forbid, have situations, medical conditions, that they don't know what eating means. They are fit through a feeding tube, God forbid, or through IV, etc. So comes the Birkat Amazon, comes the Hidah, and it says that reciting Birkat Amazon loud, loud doesn't mean that you have to yell. It means that you are able to listen word by word, with joy, will cause one to become wealthy. Now, hold on. 
what has to do wealth with Birkat Amazon. Birkat Amazon is the grace after meal. You're saying to Hashem, thank you for the food. And every other paragraph that is in the Birkat Amazon. And all kinds of things we say in the Birkat Amazon. I'll go quickly. All the Arahamams. All the Arahamam. We say Hashem provide livelihood in an honorable fashion, without shame, in a permissible way, with ease and not hardship, bring peace among us, send blessings, relief, success, made us successful in our ways, in our learning, remove the enemies from among us, bring healing to the body, healing to the soul. In other words, Birkat Amazon carries a tremendous amount of blessings. But where wealth comes into the picture? So there is a pasuk from King Solomon that says, Birkat Hashem Gita Ashir. The blessing of the Almighty is what causes the person to become successful in life. What does it mean? It doesn't mean that a person now say, Rabbi, I'm not going to work anymore. Let God send the check to my home directly. We don't live in that type of world and we are not those type of individuals. Maybe if you are very holy and you have an unbelievable type of emunah and bitachon in Hashem, then you go learn Torah all day and then you wait for the paycheck to come to you. That's a very minor amount of people who have this uh, willingness to live on a tight budget, to live with limited income and spend most of the day learning Torah. That is a very holy segment of the Jewish people. But the rest of us, that we live different lifestyles and different ways of life, we understand, I need to go, I need to make the effort. And then Hashem, God willing, will crown with success what I do. But we need to remember, not because a person works more hours, a person will earn more than it has been determined in Rosh Hashanah. So what is Talmud tells us? A person makes the effort. A person makes the ishtadlut. Go to work, but do things normal. Only concentrate in legal matters. Don't play shtick. Don't play games. Be honest in business. Treat people respectfully. Pay your salaries on time. Rest on the Shabbat. Rest on the holidays. Get home early before Shabbat starts. These are the basic requirements for going to the world of business. And pray for Parnassah. Nobody's telling us not to pray. But the Hida says the blessing of the Almighty is the one that causes the person to be successful. And there is a second part of this verse that says, Velo tosif esev ima. Two explanations. One explanation seems to be a condition. You want God to bless you. I want God to bless me. So I can take the pasuk in one way. Don't be sad. Lo tosif, do not add etzev, sadness, with it. In other words, you want God to bless you? God does not like sadness. This is a known fact. God loves happiness. Besamahta, besamahta, besimah, besamahta. Veaita ach sameyah, the Torah says. The Torah has room only for happiness. You're not happy? God says, when you change your mood, call me. Simple. This is one explanation. You know what the Hida says? That when a person 
says Birkat Amazon, properly, out loud, with joy, God will remove sadness from their life. And let's be honest. I wish that we can say we don't experience sadness in life. I think that as humans, we go through situations. We go through difficult moments. We go, God forbid, through challenges. We go, God forbid, through tragedies. And obviously, not feeling a certain level of sadness when a certain situation happens, the Torah is not telling us non-experience because if we don't do that, then we're not humans and we're not normal. But a person, I think what the Hida is trying to say is that there are moments to experience sadness, but Tisha Av is only once a year. A sporadic situations, a sporadic moments, a person may feel this way. But to live in a way like that, the Hida says, that sends away Hashem's blessings. So perhaps having better parnasa has nothing to do with having a better business. It has to do with doing the basics. I ask you a question, and will this will finish. And we're not finished. I'm only finished for today. We still have a couple of more things that we would love to share with the Kahal Kadosh. Just be patient and encourage those who have access to try to buy the book. It's called Birkat Amazon with Kavana, Hebrew and English version. Kol Teilat Ishak or Kol Mekor. These are available. This is the Hebrew only. Believe me, I'm not getting any commission for offering the books, but I don't like to be selfish. I want to share an IPO with the Kahal. So if there is an opportunity that guess what? Saying Birkat Amazon is better than the best customer. Why? Because you get Hashem's direct blessings without expenses. Even if a customer makes a day for you, guess what? You sold $3,000 today to a customer. That doesn't mean $3,000 of profit. That means you sold $3,000. How much profit did you make on 3000 Don't tell me. Take out the cost of goods. Prorate the rent, the employees, insurance, payroll taxes. So, Yanni, if you need it, let's say for argument's sake, $200, $250, dollars $300 net pay, you should be very happy. Guess what? Today, we share a formula that you don't have to sell $2,700 in goods to make $300. Today you can make $3,000 profit net. Why? Hashem sends you blessings. I read an article that brought tears to my eyes. Somebody shared this with me yesterday. I did not follow the story, but I just read the sample of the story that a person... A lady went to a store. I think she went to Payless Shoes. You heard of this store, Payless? Okay? I think they are about to retire. And they're going to be closing thousands of stores nationwide. And this lady happens to be in a city. And she went, they were sick, store closing. Uh, buy one, get one free, whatever. And she went to buy certain sports shoes for the kids, her children, I think. And one child says, oh, I wish I can buy a pair of shoes for my classmate that comes to school with torn shoes. When the mother heard this, what did she do? She went to the cash register and ask the cash register, how many pairs of shoes do you have in the store? They said, we need to check the inventory. So give or take 1,500 pairs of shoes. How much you give me wholesale price to buy the 1,500 pairs of shoes? 20 some thousand dollars. 
I don't know exactly the number. She put it on the credit card. She bought all the shoes of the store to distribute them with their religious institution for the poor children of their neighborhood or the schooling. Now, what do you think happened to the manager of that store of Payless that suddenly in one day somebody comes and buys, he got an approval to get a discount rate because it was for charitable uh, cause. But let's be honest here. It's like the case that we spoke about, the 2.2 case, that somebody came and did some magic. Okay, we don't understand. We don't, un and I know that this sounds too extreme type of cases, but how many of us goes to a shoe store and he says, you know what? You hear a mother says, too expensive, too expensive. No, too much, we cannot afford it. You hear this. You hear this more often than you think. Sometimes you go to the supermarket and you hear the kids, well, I want this, I want this, I want that. And the parent says, no. It's not in the food stamp allowance. Has shalom. And then you say, you know what? I'll pay for your grocery bill. Pay it forward, which is a beautiful gesture to do. Not too many people do this. The Zohar HaKadosh, Mechila, the Hida HaKadosh says that the ultimate blessing to the person is not their effort, is not their savviness. ish. It says Hashem is the one that gives the person the daily dosage of blessing. Birkat Amazon, according to what we are learning now, is one of the expedited versions to accelerate the blessing in our life. Now, how many times a week we say Birkat Amazon? I personally say Birkat Amazon four times a week. Friday night, Shabbat lunch, Saudah Shilishit, Melave Malka. Stop counting. No more. Not that I don't want. I want but I need to exercise self-control in food intake because I'm mahmir. I'm not happy with the kazaid. I'm mahmir, hazonish. Six, I need. I don't need one or two. That's my own shtick, my own yeserara. So let's try at least on Shabbat that we eat bread to work on this area of trying to recite Birkat Amazon, word by word, audible to the ear. And by the way, to the holy women listening and watching, this is not a men's only mitzvah. This is a mitzvah that knows no time limit. So therefore, this mitzvah is for men, this mitzvah is for ladies. For those asking, can you say Birkat Amazon in other language than Hebrew? The answer is yes. You can say it in English, you can say it in Spanish, you can say it in any language that you have access to. The idea is to recite the Birkat Amazon so the person becomes a vessel when Hashem comes to distribute, to distribute the dividends in life, we're gonna be there waiting to receive Hashem's a bountiful blessing. My good friends, have a great day to everybody. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen ve'amen. Rabbi Hananiah ben Akashia Omer, Ratzah Kadosh Baruch Hu lezakot et Israel lefichach. Irba lahem Torah mizvot sheneemar, Adonai hafez lema'an sitko, yagdil Torah ve'yadir. Kaddish. Amen. 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 Yehe Shemeh Rabba Mibarach Le Alam Ul Alme Al Maya Idbarach. Idbarach, we stabah, we paar, we troma, be nasebe itadar, alebe italal, shemeh. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Helena. Amen. 
امين حيين بالسبع بشعاب حمام بريبا بيتسالى لان يوم امين امين Have a great day.